Hello and welcome to Virtual Investor Conferences. My name is Bob Power and on behalf of OTC Markets, we're very pleased you've joined us for our next live presentation from Silver Hammer Mining Corporation. Before I introduce our speaker, a few points to note. Please submit your questions in the question box to the left of the slides. If you're interested in scheduling a meeting with Silver Hammer Mining, please click on the Meetings tab found on the left navigation bar. You'll be able to view the company's availability and submit a meeting request. On a final note, all of today's presentations will be recorded and available for 24-7 replay. At this point, I'm very pleased to welcome Morgan Lextrom, President and CEO of Silver Hammer Mining Corporation, which trades on the OTCQB venture market under the symbol HAMRF and on the CSE under the symbol HAMR. Welcome, Morgan. Yeah, thanks for having me and uh, thanks everyone for tuning in to this presentation. I know it's a bit of an unconventional uh, conference for a mining company to be attending, given that it's a tech focus. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it up a bit. I'm not just going to read off the slides like a standard kind of presentation, but I want to I wanna really bring the focus on why there's a mining company presenting at a tech conference and why I think Silverhammer should be presenting at a tech conference and why I think it's a great investment case for the future of silver mining and technology integration in the United States. Uh, so given that, I, I definitely wanna introduce my company, Silver Hammer Mining. We've been running for about a year now. Our main focus, uh, boy, I'm gonna read some forward looking statements like the typical slide thing here. Um, the main focus of our company is when we started, we're like, how do we build a leading silver mining company focused on the in the Western US we looked at past producing assets and we said, okay, how do we do this? Now, how do we do this and how do we influence other industries and how do we use modern technology to do this? That includes looking at special, special methods like using strong ESG principles, new technology for exploration, things that a lot of people aren't doing right, you know, or aren't, aren't quite cued into doing yet. So my background in this is I'm actually a mind builder. I've spent, I'm 37 years old. I've spent a, a large portion of my career working all over the world, um, building mines in Africa and Indonesia and Peru and Mongolia and all these, all these large mines. And I, I noticed, you know, my background's electrical and automation. I noticed, hey, how do we integrate technology? So when this group approached me about running Silver Hammer, it was really neat because I said, well, I can bring my own ideas and we can bring all these new technology ideas to it. So join the company and Lo and behold, we got our first asset. It's in Idaho. Again, a past producing silver mine with a gold credit. What that means is there's gold and silver there. And we, we looked at it and said, okay, how do we explore in a different way? Instead of just plowing in roads and doing the traditional mining, you know, start, start going at it. We said, well, how do we take a step back, look at the rules and regulations and design a process to it? And that's what we did. We designed a process and within three months, we had a permit to drill. And in the mining sector, in the US Forest Service, that takes between one and two years traditionally. So we had, you know, we from the date we put in the permit to approve was two weeks. Again, use, utilizing modern technology. That, that got us going in Idaho. We brought in some projects in Nevada. And by doing that, expanded our portfolio. Now we have three past producing mines, silver mines, most of them from the 1800s that haven't been touched. And why that's relevant is because there are high potential for large silver deposits localized to the US in these high grade districts that, again, people have forgot about. They haven't gone back. They're just, you know, people in the mining industry, we tend to focus on the, the current thing, the trend, where, where's, you know, where's the majors? Let's, let's go around them. And a lot of these districts tend to be forgotten about. And I don't mean because, you know, we, they weren't good or anything. I mean, like legacy, like people have a 10 year mind life and, you know, and, and boom, it's gone. And we forgot about that district or we didn't we didn't go to it anymore. So we were fortunate in picking these up. We have a great team behind us, including some uh, top shelf leaders in the mining industry. But really what I want to touch on there after we touch on our capital structure, because whether you're an investor in mining or tech, you kind of want to understand the capital structure of the company, we have roughly a whole 46 and a half million shares out. Um, we've only been running a year. We just ran a financing, oversubscribed it. And so in having that, we still have 11.2 million warrants out at 50 cents. 
that could eventually capitalize the company significantly more without having to go back to the market. So we're in a really strong cash position as a junior mining company and able to push our projects forward with low cost, high impact work, utilizing modern technology. All right. So one thing when we're talking about silver in the silver space and why a silver, uh, a silver exploration company is relevant is, is when you look at the, the uses of silver in the world now, you know, back in the day, it was a currency, it was a hedge. Nowadays, it's over 50% industrial use, solar panels, microchips, silver paste. As we advance in this technology driven era into green technology, silver and copper are becoming integral parts of this. And what more, what better place to be than in the US with a supply chain that could potentially supply localized US manufacturing. So the idea, again, back to the idea of Silver Hammer is building out a local based silver mining company that is based in the US with a ton of talent around and these potential mines. So that leads us to our mine in Idaho. It was a past producing mine that barely touched it. They could only put a small land package together. And when we took it over, we said, okay, well, hold on. Or when we got the asset, we said, well, there's gotta be a lot more. So we were able to consolidate the whole district into about a five and a half kilometer, uh, 3.2 mile area. And that gave us a lot more exploration targets. And in mining, when you're exploring, you're looking for those, those rocks that come out of the ground that say, hey, I've got silver and gold in me. This is where you look. And we had the existing mine, the underground. So a big part of that was how do we do low cost, high impact work? Well, we went back into the underground mine and by underground, I mean, you walk right in from surface from like a road and you're in the underground. So it's not deep. And we we did a little bit of work in there. Very, again, low cost. And we put an underground drill in there. So now we didn't have to go on surface and again, build roads and do all this. We had direct access to what was we call the mineralization that hosts, you know, this gold and silver. So we were able to put a drill in there. We were able to start testing down below what they had mined before. And lo and behold, look, there's more there. And uh, now this year, you know, we had great grades and I'm not going to drone on about grades because that's, you know, it's more, it's more, how, how does this get big quick? Well, how this gets big is that was one shoot. You know, we're going to start testing that shoot down to depth, just like the mines in the area. So a lot of the monster mines in the area go down to 18, 1900 meters at depth. We've only scratched the surface at about 10 meters. So that should show you the large potential for that shoot. But now we're looking for what we call a parallel shoot. Another shoot that as we drill over, we can find. So that gives us a massive size potential, not only at depth, but along what we call the strike. So now you're looking for all these different, you know, mineralized bodies and you start to tie that together into a larger mine. And remember in Idaho and Coeur d'Alene, this is where, you know, if you heard of companies like Hecla and Coeur, this is where they got their start. And Hecla is still operating a mine called Lucky Friday. That area has produced 1.2 billion ounces of silver in a very short time frame. So when you're well, short, but a hundred years, short in the world span, but, when you look at that, everyone else started to look in other areas. This area was just very un, untouched and we're, we're very happy to be there. We're starting our drill up here, hopefully this week, by the end of the week or start of next week. So a lot of catalysts coming out of Silver Strand, our flagship project here in very short order. And that again, drilling takes about a month, month and a half for us. And, and we should have results coming out consistently from that. You know, we start hitting this parallel shoot. We start hitting down at depth of more mineralization this thing really does have the potential to be a large, large exploration and development target. And when you think about in the mining industry, I like to use Great Bear Resources as an example. So Great Bear was a recent buyout for, I think it was $1.6 billion. That stock, I had friends in it that were in it at 50 cents. That stock sold for $29 a share when it got bought out. So there is exponential potential in the mining space for share appreciation and growth. You know, obviously everyone has to do it their own way, but there is, we are, I believe at that fulcrum where these big massive acquisitions are going to start happening. And I want to position Solar Hammer to be a leading mine, mining company that, Hey, we can either start producing or we can get acquired, but we are focused on building out a top tier company with top tier assets and a, and a fantastic team with a bow tie. <laughs>
So that leads us over to what I call our ELISA project. And I'm, again, I'm not going to drone on about all the grades and how great it is because it is, it is an interesting project. And it's interesting because it's in an area that hadn't been touched since the 1800s. 1868 to 1872, they produced an insane amount of silver and, and up to 40 million ounces in a short, short period, hand to mouth. No modern technology, no like, you know, no big, big loaders and all that stuff. This was hand to mouth. So very high grade district, completely forgotten about. We were able to pick it up from, from a very, uh, very well-known geologist uh, named Dave Forrest. And we started exploring it and we started seeing a very high grade silver all across the property, across the top, grades along the bottom part of the property. But we also noticed we had significant grades of copper. Again, back to that whole story of, of American silver and copper coming into it and providing local. So now we have potential for not only silver there, but for a copper exploration and expansion there. So now we're out there, we're doing work. We should have a number of catalysts coming out of our, our ELISA project here in short order. And what that means for us is, again, not only are we exploring one of our properties, we're doing low cost, high impact work on our other properties to advance them. So we're not just sitting still and you know the market's been rough, but hey, we're, we're not sitting still, we're running but we're doing it in a very capital uh, friendly way that gives us the biggest results and leans on our team in the background for that technical expertise. And our last but not least project, we call it the Silverton project. And that's about an hour and 20 minutes from Tonopah, Nevada. It's, it's on a, and it's on a pretty historic trend. There's not, uh, the last mine was there in 1930s and they, they walked away. They weren't able to use things what we call like geophysics, modern technology the ability to look under the rocks using mag and hyperspectral using satellite imaging. We're doing that now. We're starting to explore there. We're starting to expand the land package and we're starting to see again, high grades of silver on the surface, little bits of grades of gold on one side of the property as well. So we started permitting it. We're permitted to drill there. So another high potential target with catalysts coming out all the way through the rest of the potentially next year. So, Again, another three shots on goal, as we call it, with three assets that were mined at one point, but not heavily. So we, we, we like where we're going with the company. And how, how I tie that back into tech is being a silver producing company really leans heavily towards how, how tech is advancing and providing that local source of silver. And, and you know, I always like to say the American dream because it really is. I mean, when, when you're looking at producing locally, creating jobs locally, having local people and providing a local source of that silver, potentially gold, potentially copper, it gets really exciting. And, you know, I, I'm a Canadian, I live in Canada, I've worked all over the world. And to be in the Western US is just, it's fantastic. People are so friendly and, and knowledgeable. So again, really excited to be presenting here at, at a silver, uh, at a tech conference with a silver mining company, because I think it's one of the integral parts of the advancement of green technology in the world. And I'm very happy that we're able to do this. So I will touch on our team last but not least, of course, because I think it's important to remember there is a, a large team um, about this. And so my, my background, like I said, is mine building. I've worked for a lot of uh, large American companies, uh, Freeport McMoran in Indonesia, I've worked for the, with the Rio Tinto Group in Mongolia. I've worked in West Africa with a company called Golden Star Resources, who were just bought out for $680 million. I've spent lots of time consulting in Peru and in, in Canada and in the US. So again, it leans heavily towards that build it mindset, how to build a, how to build a company, but how to build a team, run projects, and, and bring them through on time, on budget. Our chief geologist, who's I always say it's probably one of the most important people because we're a mining company. We need a top level geologist and that's Phil Mulholland. He's been in this industry for, he says 36 years, but I'm going to go a little longer. Uh, you can tell by his picture, he's pretty young, but uh, he's, he's worked for a lot of the major companies in the U.S. Uh, tons of experience in Idaho, where, in the area that we're working with in, in Idaho, as well as in Nevada. So he brings that, that high level geology, very calm personality experience to it and has helped really define these drill targets and these mines the way we're looking at them right now. So again, Phil's a fantastic uh, addition to our team and that transitions us over to our directors. 
And when you think of board of directors, usually people are like, okay, they meet once every, you know, three or four months, they talk about the financials and they do their little things. The thing about our board is it's heavily involved. And what I mean by that is when you have people like Lawrence Ralston and Ron Burke and Jonas Lang, these are experts in the industry. Ron Burke, we used to be the vice president of exploration for Centera, a very large mining company, uh, vice president of exploration for Silver Standard, another very large silver mining company. He's been accredited with multiple large finds in his, in his life. And to be able to have him come on our board to compliment people like Lawrence Ralston, another fantastic geologist, uh, mine builder. He's built large companies. He started West Bay Capital Advisors. He has a ton of capital markets experience as well as he's the current chairman of Metalla Royalty. He's a very large multi hundred million dollar royalty company. So that all complements Jonas Lang, who is an excellent member of the capital markets team. He has been in this industry for about 14 years. It says 12 plus, but it's 14 now. He's been involved with raising hundreds of millions of dollars. He is an executive vice president for a company called Maple Gold. They're a gold mining company based in Ontario and provides just that really you know, the three pronged approach, we, we like to say we have three assets and we have a three pronged team, myself being the mind builder. We have capital markets folks in the back on an excellent, excellent group of geology folks there as well. I would touch on our advisors, but I'm, you know, running up on my, my time and I'd love to answer some questions quickly. Our two, two of our main advisors, uh, Warwick Smith, a very talented venture capitalist here, here in Vancouver, um, runs a company called American Pacific has taken that from a five cent stock up into the dollar 40, uh, very successful with his assets and, and, and very, very good advisor on the capital market side, compliments Jonas Lang really well and our team. And our, our head of IR, I definitely have to say congratulations to her. She just had a, ba a new baby yesterday, so she, she couldn't be on this call, but she brings that, that investor relations background from the past 10, 15 years. But, you know, keeps me in check, which is kind of good. You know, you can't do that. You can't do that. And, and, and really has driven the company, adding some significant newsletter writers and helped, helped us on that side of it. So we have a very strong following with some great, uh, great newsletter writers. So that is my presentation on the Silver Hammer side. I encourage you to check us out. Um, we're, like I said, we're a fairly new silver story in the U.S., but uh, really focused on doing things with a strong ESG principle. Uh, looking solely at like very largely at the environment and how we do things different, but also how we build a leading silver mining company utilizing modern technology in the U.S. And now I'll go to the questions. Uh, one of them is, what is your ownership structure and mix? So when I started with the company, I put every, I'm 37, it's my first CEO role. I put every dime I had into it. And I'm not kidding, <laughs> you know. So I, I own about three and a half three and a bit, a little more, a little more than three and a half percent of the company. Personally, um, I keep buying on the open market when I'm able to, and I'm not blacked out and I'll continue to buy on the open market. Um, going forward, I, I believe in our story, our, uh, boards of directors holds, I think total everyone in that's about six and a half, seven percent. Sometimes people say that sounds low. I, I think it's, it's a true testament to, you know, everyone pooling their money as, as much as they can and putting in, but having involvement, I mean, we don't pay our directors and, them having the involvement that they do, and I mean on like a weekly basis, just again shows how, how committed they are to building this company. And the most of our, uh, I'd say nine, the other 92% is, is, we have a little bit of institutional, but mainly retail held uh, throughout the US, throughout Canada, I'm sure different parts of the world, but very retail strong story. Another question, what are your key milestones for the next 18 months and are you funded for your drill programs? The answer is yes. We raised just over $3 million. We are funded for our Idaho drill program. That's like I said, commencing right now. Our, our key milestones are gonna be finding those parallel shoots at Silver Strand in Idaho, continuing to test at depth, showing that there's depth potential there. That means going down, you know, two, 300 meters, starting to utilizing geophysics, which is again, that low cost, high impact work that using modern technology to maybe find other parallel shoots, other signatures that that show the same resistivity anomaly, which means we're you know shooting electrons down, getting them back up, and saying, "Hey, this looks exactly like the mine." Okay, let's go look at that and keep exploring. We are we are finishing a soil sampling program at Eliza in Nevada, in that Eliza project that will be done. That again, catalyst will come out of that for the next number of months. 
So as far as the 18 month outlook, yes, we are we are funded for this drill program. We are a junior mining company. So as we advance, you know, we, we reassess, we, we look at our assets, we go, how do we distribute the capital properly? But I would say, you know, 12 to 18 months, I'm not worried about anything. We are we are extremely well funded for that. Uh, next one. When were your projects last mined? Great question. So the Eliza project in Nevada, it's in the historic Hamilton district. That district was last like mined, mined in the 1800, 1868 to 1872. They mined Treasure Hill. They mined a portion of our property and a very small portion. There's been some mines in the area, you know, across the mountain range, but this, this part of the district has been mined since the late 18, mid to late 1800s. So it's pretty neat walking out there. I've been on site many times. You see all these different historic remnants of different towns, something called Sherman Town and Hamilton. And it's really neat. There's some buildings still standing out there. So hopefully that answered your question about uh, Eliza. Silver Strand was mined in, uh, up until 2012. Uh, again, they only had a small portion of the area. So they, they stopped there. The company that owned it was focused on something else. Uh, they were a gold focused company. Their asset was really close to their mill, which is actually just down the road from us. And they refocused on their, their priority targets. Once we were able to expand the whole land claim package, now it made it interesting. And I've already had lots of fun talks with them about it. So, and the Silverton project was in 1930, I believe 1932, it was last mined. So some of those hundred year marks for, for two of the projects. Can you, one of the questions, can you speak to the infrastructure for the three projects? I, I absolutely can. Um, so let's start with Idaho Silver Strand. There, there is uh, the main infrastructure around the area, uh, the piping, all, all the electrical cables are in place. Um, there is a power, power line accessible just down the road for a potential build. Um, there's water uh, near, near a site. The mine actually produces water. So we, we actually, excuse me, we recirculate the, the water produced from the mine to use for drilling. So we net discharge almost nothing when we're drilling. We actually use no water from any sources locally because we don't need to because the mine itself produces uh, produces water. There is a mill about 80, 80 miles away or 80, 80 kilometers, sorry, away. Um, I know it sounds like a lot of distance, but it's not. It's about an hour and 15, hour and 25 minutes away. And that could potentially be used if we ever put this into production or when we put, not if ever, when we, you know, find enough there to put it into production, that is potential um, to, to use that mill. I've been in great talks with them. New Jersey Mining owns it. Uh, they made it very public that they're looking to sell it. So there's another potential there. Um, Eliza, again, it's in the, it's in the back country. There's power nearby. There is water aquifers nearby. The, the Hamilton district was mined um, in the 1980s. That's on the other side of the mountain from us. So there, there is infrastructure locally available um, from the power side. The roads are great getting in and out of there. Um, I've been in all three sites in summer, um, sometimes in winter when you need to, but there's local roads throughout all three of our sites. And Silverton is actually right off the highway. There's power lines right there. Um, the infrastructure around there is strong. It's an hour 20. It's got a cell tower nearby. So it, it's the really interesting thing I like to say about our project in Idaho back there for a second is we're utilizing a company called Visibility. Uh, to do our, our security. But through that, we actually created a Wi-Fi hub there. So you can call and, and we've created a bit of a safety net there for our workers. So now we have cell phone service in an area that generally didn't. And it's been in the mountains. And so utilizing modern technology, modern cameras, we're able to monitor site now. Plus we're able to use email and call out from site. Gives our, uh, gives our on-site guys a distinct advantage instead of having to drive out and, and redo the reports every day. We get a lot more live updates. Um, what's the next one? Huh. Question. What attracted you and your advisors to the potential to the potential for these projects? Great question. I, I, I actually really like this one. So when I was approached about the project, uh, the gentleman Warwick Smith was one of one of the gentlemen in the background that helped put this together. And he says, do you, do you want to build a mining company? And of course, my answer was, yes, I want to build a mining company. And uh, he said, well, we have this great project called Silver Strand. It was a mine. We think it has exponentially large potential to grow. We think you can put it into production. Can you take a look at it? I took a look at it. And I, right away, I would look at the team. You know, it was Lawrence Ralston. Ron Burke was an advisor for us. And it just, it clicked with me. You have 
high level people that have had multiple discoveries in their career. You have capital markets people and it drew me into it as a team. It was, it's a great, great starting place as a CEO. And hopefully I can build a, a potent, like potentially build a large scale mining company out of this and having the backing of those types of people really makes it easy to come into a role. You know, it's obviously challenging, but when you, when you can make a phone call and people are giving you strong advice and, you know, they've been through the learning that, Hopefully I don't have to go through now. So again, that's one of the big things that drew me to that. The other thing about the project side is not just Silver Strand, but the Nevada projects. When Dave Forrest approached us with these projects, he was really excited. And he's a very calm guy and you know, very strong demeanor, like very, very, very strong geologist and very well known for finding large deposits. Um, his last one was Sunward in Columbia, and I believe they found 10 million ounces of gold. So don't quote me on that. But he approached it. We looked at it. Dave and I actually traveled to site. It was one of those, uh, we call it team building exercises and took a look exactly what he saw there. And it, it was it was fantastic. He did the research, he put the put the time in. So it made sense for us to to grab those assets. And there were a lot of other groups that were looking to grab them. But through relationships with Warwick and, and with the team there in the background, we were able to pick up our Nevada assets. And hopefully that uh, that that explains it to you. But Finally, for me, being able to look at something that's been from the 1800s and no one's touched and people have forgotten about, that's exciting. To go back to a mine from 2012 that people only looked at a small secular part of it and look at a large picture, big scope, again, very exciting. It gives me the potential to back to building a leading silver mining company in the U.S. So that's my uh, that's my answer to your question. Um, I think that's all the all the questions. That I can see here. If anyone wants to submit more questions, you're more than welcome to. I know I high leveled a lot of the uh, the projects. I, I wanted to keep them high level because I, I think diving into the uh, the geology and stuff, those are more in person. You know, you're more than welcome to get a hold of me. We can dive into it. I, I just love the potential here. Right, we last year our share was ran all the way up to a dollar eight during that November spike, but you know we've been holding really strong where we're at, and I, I definitely compliment it to people that are shareholders and potential shareholders. I, I think we're in for an interesting, very interesting and, and progressive ride here with Silver Hammer. And, and I welcome all potential shareholders conversations. I really enjoy talking about our, our company. So please feel free to reach out to me at any time and uh, schedule an interview. Thank you very much. Uh, Wish everyone the best day and uh, hopefully have a fantastic weekend. It's going to be warm, I'm sure, all over all over Canada and the U.S. and wherever you are. So have a great day. Thank you very much for joining us on this tech conference with a silver mining company.